let's think about this. So, what should the nations know? So we are uh, welcoming all those who will be uh, uh, looking online as we are thinking upon this particular passage. The passage really thinking of is, what should the nations know? Do they know anything? You know, we should uh, reconsider, you know, where we're going. Where is this world bound for? Are we bowing to the modern psychology? You know, modern psychology and what it's doing? Uh, uh, teaching them uh, this, the, some new ideas and ways? But it doesn't help, does it? Has success consumed you? Uh, success in the world, many people is taken over by success. And we get these things here, you know, the politicians are trying to push their way. And uh, they're trying to get jobs in Europe and all that sort of thing. But uh, there it is. I'm sure the thing has to be run. But I'm sure that they, you know, in some cases success has run into their heads. Have you given up on the rat race maybe? And uh, can't understand what all is going on. Is there more to life? than fame and fortune? Is there more to life than these things? What is that? Hmm. And what about the Egyptians? Well, they're really thinking about, uh, you know, the, uh, the life they have, and they're trying to, to get all the benefits they can. But uh, sometimes, you know, there were those, like uh, those slaves there, they were feeling discouraged and disillusioned. And we can feel discouraged and disillusioned at times and not understand what's happening in the world today. This world, you know, there's, there's so many terrible things going on in the news and different things. So the question really is, what should the nations know? Will they take note? I don't think they will take great note of, of uh, what's happening uh, until they think about it. And so. I would like to think of one failure and two fortune and three future. So failure, fortune and future. You know, there will be those there in Egypt who are going to be fail. And they're going to fail drastically. But if they really turned for help, there could, there could be a fortune for them, you know. And there could be a great future. And so the nations face failure. You know. They really face, that's what's happening. And we see there in Europe, we see there in all the place, they're trying to tell us great things. But really, they have uh, made laws and different things that are, are not according to God's word. And of course the politicians will fail you. You know, they're, they're, uh, uh, they're not uh, really geared. They're only thinking about this world and how they can go on and how they can self-esteem and, and, and the way we can, uh, you know, encourage uh, all these things on. And they're really looking for a big job in life. This world is really doomed to fail. Maybe I'm a kind of uh, 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 putting you know, things on it, you see, but it is doomed to fail. One day this world is going to burn up, one day this world is going to finish. And what will we do? How will it be? Is it global warming or global warning? They're all talking about and trying to make, get more money out of us through global warming. And really, it's, it's really, there's a warning, I tell you. That this world is, is, you know, the world is getting, is burning down, is, is not, uh, not going to last. And so it's a great warning. If you're looking on this, remember, think about it, you know, yeah. of this, uh, the way it is. And that the nations of the world are going to fail. They haven't got the answer. You know, Egypt had, had maybe a million slaves. And they were getting their pyramids built and they were getting all the thing, great things done. But that's all they were thinking of, how they could get free labour out of people. 
And what is the world today, you know, like? There are over 40 million in slavery in the world today. That's the, that is the local figure that uh, they've told me. And uh, it's, it's quite sad, isn't it? That that's the way it is. We think slavery is finished. But it's not. And you see, the politicians will fail. They'll be wanting your vote. But you know, they will fail you. And they have all these great blurb and stories, you know, there about what they're going to do, you see. But will they ever carry it out? And, and the rules and laws they make will not be very good, will they? And you see, politicians will fail you and relig religion will fail you because religion is not designed to save. It, religion is really uh, doing various things and going through uh, rigmarole and, and going through different uh, things, you know. But it's not saved. It's not trusting in, in the Lord Jesus. It's not trusting in God. You know, I've been reading of a nation steeped in religion and doomed to failure. It's seeking its own ways and its own religion and its own gods and the Lord save. The God of on, on won't save. Baal won't save. All these different ones let the people down. But you see people are worshipping at another shrine. They're worshipping at uh, uh, how they can run things so well. Ireland was steeped in religion and it will fail. Lots of religion, but it doesn't help. And so there it is. It's quite sad, you know, that uh, you see, but because it's going through various ritual, but it's not really got a relationship with God, with the Lord, and trusting in Him as, uh, uh, that, to help. Not following the Word of God, you see. Religion, you see, does not know God. And that's where, it's, that's where uh, we, we're thinking of tonight. Knowing God. Knowing God's way. Uh, and that's quite sad, isn't it? So uh, you, people can be going through a rigmarole, rules and regulations, and they're doing various things. But you see, it's just a matter of form. And they, it doesn't help much. There's no relationship with the true God. Not presented in that way, you see. Oh, yes, we have various language and various things, you see, uh, you know, uh, that we think and... And, and all that, you see. But the point is, is this relationship with God that's so important? And the response may be, uh, I, fe I felt good. I've done my bit. And you see, what it is, it's all self. And these people were thinking of in Egypt, it's all self. And they're trying to do their bit of religion, you see. And they're hoping that that will be. And they have got all the answers when they're faced with the true God. And so the nations, they face failure. In Exodus 7, 5, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. That is she, the whole emphasis on what, we're, what they're doing and what's happening. The Egyptians <coughs> had to know that God is the Lord, Yahweh, mm. that I am the Lord. When I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. You see, that is the, that is the, the thing, you see. And so, the real point is, it's really simple. It's really down to what? To knowing the Lord. Not more difficult, not, not a big difficult thing. You don't have to go through and learn various things and do all sorts of things. It's the simple faith in Jesus Christ, the simple faith in the Lord. Believing him that he is the one who's the, the master uh, of the universe, that he is the one whom we answer to. 
So it's really failure or fortune. Now what do we mean by fortune, you know? You know, the world's fortunes don't last, you know. They, they go and they do all they can and they make all the money they can, but it doesn't last, does it? God is promising these slaves the gift of a new life. He's promising them freedom. And if we are in slavery in the world and the different things in the world, it will not save us. But God is promising a new life for us. He's promising a new way. And he's promising a whole new future. That is the great thing, you see. But it's hard to take it all in. And so many people are, 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 are really working to the bone and, and they're working at the religion and they're crazy about it and they're serious about it. Of course, very serious. They take it very seriously, a lot of people. But you see, the main thing is that we are, have to do, go God's way. Why does Pharaoh say no? He says no. He simply says that no. Why does he say no? You know, to these, to Moses. Why does he continue, no, I won't let them go. I want these people to work for me. No, I don't know your God. He does not know that I am the Lord. He doesn't know that. Isn't that terrible? Mm -hmm. And yet that's it. And that's the answer. And friends, that's the answer it, for anyone who turns on to listen to this. It's to know the Lord in your life. To know that he's sovereign. To commit your life into his hand. To trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. And he's the one who will give you the future and the fortunes and the, the great life ahead. The promises that he will make. He's making those promises. And he's going to keep and he's going to stick to his word. And he's going to bring them out. Now, they do have to be obedient. You know, it's a fortune. You know, people go to make their fortune, in, they say, in far America, or someplace like that. And America is opening up to give us more work there. But will they just go to make a fortune? And here's the fortune that God is offering, a wonderful life for us, a great life for us. A great life for, for those people there who are in slavery. And a great life for people who are in slavery in the world today. But so many of them. And there's so many of them working hard to try and, and help them out of it. And they're using safe houses and, and different things like that. In Exodus 5.2, And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Who is Yahweh? That I should obey his voice. To let Israel go. That's his big argument that we had before. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? What does he say? I do not know the Lord, not terrible, nor will I let Israel go. Isn't that quite a challenging one, isn't he? 5 verse 2. And, you know, he needs we need to know the Lord, don't we? We need to dwell upon his word and we need to ask him to be saviour and lord of our lives. He wanted his pyramids and his empire built. Oh, you know, one day I'll die and, and I need this pyramid to, to go into and, and I'll take all I have in there and, uh, and it's all for this future. Think about a future life, you know. All right, and they prepare for that. And, and they bring all the stuff in. And, and people have to go in with him, you know, even though they're not dead yet. And they get all locked up and there they have to stay. And of course they die with him too. And he has all his pictures round about him of what he loves, you know. And so in Jeremiah 29, 11, there's a great verse. We have it, we have it in, 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 
no modern language there, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And so uh, there it is, there's the great promises that God has in his word. He's going to give us a future and a hope. And that's great. You see, he's a God who wants to help us. He's a God who loves us and cares for us. He's deeply concerned. Not for us to be working ourselves to the bone. How do we know the Lord? That's the great question. How do we know him? Well, there it is, you see. It's, it's the... God has sent his son, and here there's promises of sending the Saviour, and so the future. In John 1, 12 to 13, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man but of God. So as the whole point is, it's a work of God in our lives to be born of God. That is the answer. And if the uh, leaders of the world would take note of that, then it would be a different world. But of course we'll have to wait for the new world, don't we? The one that Jesus is coming to set up. In Isaiah 45, 14, <coughs> thus the Lord, the, says the Lord, the labour of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush and of the Sabaeans, men of Satyr, shall come over to you. Ah, come over to Israel uh, in the last days, of course, and they shall be yours. They shall walk behind you. Wow. They shall come over in chains and they shall bow down to you. They will make supplication to you, saying, Surely God is in you, and there is no other. There is no other God. And we see uh, some ways and some ways like that happen in the world today. The people are leaving their belief, their religion, and they're coming to trust in the living God. We see Murph is... is uh, um, doing his radio programs and people are inquiring about the Lord. In uh, Isaiah 27, we have other references, but maybe one or two, 27 verse 13. So it shall be in that day, the great trumpet will be blown. And it's really the gospel, you know, trumpet. They will come who are about to perish in the land of Assyria, to be lost. And they who are outcasts in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of Jerusalem. And now maybe we can't quite understand that. But what is it saying? It's saying, you know, no, these, that, uh, what did we call a generation in Egypt? They're putting all this pressure and having all these slaves and Pharaoh himself. They won't be saved, but there's a day coming when the outcasts of the land of Egypt shall worship the Lord. There will be a day opening when these different countries uh, will turn to the Lord in the last days, of course. Uh, it's quite hard to understand it, and there's so many different references about that. It talks about them uh, in uh, uh, Isaiah, uh, you know, ten women will will we'll come to a man and they'll say, oh, we don't, we'll mind ourselves but uh, and feed ourselves, but we want to be called by your name. I wonder, does it mean that we that become Christians or come to follow the Lord? And so, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite difficult, I suppose, to take it, to grasp it and to take it all in. But God is, is, is calling people out from other nations. What should nations know? Is the future bright? I believe it is. And I believe it's all centred upon the Lord Jesus Christ who is going to come again. 
But he's come, you see, in the gospel age. And he's come with great blessings and he's come to bring the good news of the gospel. And of course his people trust in him. And we're hearing about the great movement amongst Jews and a great movement amongst Gentiles. Uh, and uh, there's another uh, 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 missionary society called Elam Ministries. Uh, and they they uh, learned that there was a, a text in Jeremiah 49, 39, that in the last days, Elam would come to the Lord. In the last days, that there would be a great move. And as a result of that, they started Elam Ministries. Who is, what country is, uh, that's the old name for uh, Iraq, Iran, the old name for Iran. And it says many people there in Iran, they were really seeking the Lord. They they've got tired of uh, the religion that's there, uh, and they want to put their faith and trust in Jesus. And that they see He is the one, you know, has, does great things, uh, and they learn about Him and want to follow Him. And so, what should the nations know? The nations need to know more about what God will do for them. They need, but you see, if they're like Pharaoh, they won't listen. Uh, and we have to not be like Pharaoh, have we? We have to take note and listen to this, don't we? And to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, who really suffered so much, we thank you about that at Easter time, who suffered to pay the price of our sin. And so therefore, the future is bright. And so let's pray. So, oh, gracious God, we pray now that you will guide. We pray, Lord, your direction. And we ask, oh, Lord, that if anyone has some interest in this topic, Lord, that you may indeed help them to understand something more about it. We pray your blessing. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.